In our last class, we learned the names of the parts of a leaf. In this class, we will learn how scientists describe each of the parts. The more carefully and accurately we can describe each part, the easier it will be to identify the trees. Part 1. The blade, which is the whole leaf except the petiole. Blades can either be flat or needle-like. When we look at a leaf, the first part of the leaf we look at is the blade. The blade is going to tell us some big general information that lets us narrow down the possibilities of what kind of tree the leaf came from. Leaves can either be needle-like, like a pine needle, or flat, like a pancake. Needle-like or flat. If you're not sure, one way that I remember it is that needle-like leaves look like a pine needle or they look like a broom. Flat blades look flat as a pancake, but they could also be like a canoe paddle. This is a canoe paddle for a person. This is a canoe paddle for a mouse. So flat blades are like a canoe paddle, needle-like blades are like a broom. Blades can also be simple or compound. All of the leaves on the left over here have simple blades. One blade attached to one petiole. This leaf has one blade attached to one petiole. This leaf has one blade attached to a pretty short, but one petiole. This leaf is a little more fancy, but one leaf, or one blade, one petiole. One blade, one petiole. One big blade, one long petiole. All of these are simple. So on the right side of the table here, we have the leaves with compound blades. This leaf has one very long petiole attached with one, two, three, four, five different blades. We say it is compound. Simple blades have one blade attached to one petiole. Compound blades have two or more blades attached to one petiole. Once you've described the blade, the next step is to look at the leaf's edges or margin. Margins can be lobed or not lobed. All leaves have margins. The margin is the edge of the leaf or the edge of the leaf's blade. Right now, everything we talk about is only about the margin or edge. So, leaf margins can either be lobed, like the leaves close to me, or not lobed, like the leaves farther away. If a leaf is lobed, you will find a place where the margin goes out, in, out, in, out, in as you trace your finger around the margin. So this margin, three times I went out, in, out, in, out, in. So I would say that the margin of this leaf has three lobes. In contrast, the leaves over here, when I trace my finger around the margin, I go out but I never cut back in, so it's just out, 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 and around. This leaf is not lobed. Not lobed, not lobed, not lobed, not lobed. Whether or not a leaf margin has lobes, it can also be toothed or smooth. 
The margin of the leaf can either be toothed or smooth. If the margin is toothed, you'll see lots and lots of little, little bumps that go all around the edges of the leaf. This leaf has lots of little bumps all around the edges of the leaf. This leaf, lots of little bumps all around the edges of the leaf. In contrast, many leaves do not have lots of little bumps all around the edges. This leaf has a smooth margin, no little bumps. This leaf has a smooth margin, no little bumps. Even this leaf has a smooth margin. Yes, there are points at the tip, but between each tip, there's lots of smoothness in the margin. So this has points, but it's still a smooth margin. Smooth margin leaves with no little bumps. Toothed leaves with lots of little bumps. Toothed margin, smooth margin. When the margin is lobed, the tips of the lobes can either be curved, pointed, or spiked. When the margin is lobed, the lobes can either be pointed, curved, or spiked. The pointed lobes have points at the tips. Points at the tips. Points at the tips of each lobe. This one also has points, even though these points aren't very sharp. If the lobes are pointed, they come to a point, and they might look sharp, but they're not sharp. They do not hurt when you touch them. Pointy lobes look sharp, but don't hurt when you touch them. If the lobes are curved, they go more gradually around each lobe, just like a curve. Large curves, small curves. Ouch! The last kind is called spiked. Spiked lobes have little thorns that are very sharp on the edge of each lobe. We call them spiked if the lobe would hurt when you touch it. Spiked lobes hurt. Curved lobes are a curve. And pointy lobes have points, but they don't hurt when you touch them. Veins are the lines on the leaf. Veins can either be pinnate or palmate. Pinnate veins have one large primary vein that is thick in the middle and straight as a pin. In contrast, palmate veins have more than one primary vein coming from the petiole. Usually they'll have three or five. They're called palmate because the veins extend from the petiole just like fingers extend from the bottom of your hand. These veins, these primary veins, are all pinnate. There's one primary vein running down the middle of the leaf and lots of smaller, thinner, secondary veins on the sides. One primary vein, lots of thinner, secondary veins. These leaves over here are palmate. They have many thick veins coming from the petiole, and then the secondary veins come off to the side. One, two, three thick primary veins, and then smaller ones from the side. One, two, three primary veins, and then smaller secondary veins from the side. One, two, three, four, five primary veins and then some secondary veins coming off the side. So palmate, like the palm of your hand, 
Lots of fingers coming off to the side. Pinnate, straight as a pin. The petiole is the stem of the leaf. Petioles can be short, medium, or long. The petiole of the leaf can be long, short, or medium. If the petiole is long, it's longer or about as long as the whole leaf blade. So I could actually bend this petiole, and if I bend the petiole, it almost reaches the top of the blade. This would be an example of a long petiole. Over here, I have an example of a short petiole. This petiole, I'm not going to bend it, but if I did, it would probably only come to about my finger. This is much less than half of the length of the blade. So if the petiole was much less than half, we would call it short. And then I have this last one. When I bend it, this almost goes to halfway, so I would say this is a medium petiole. Short, much less than half, medium, about half, and long, almost as big as the whole blade or more. Those are the three different types of petioles. Now you've seen how scientists describe the different parts of a leaf. Now we're going to do an activity where you will sort leaves by the characteristics that scientists use to describe them. <laughs>